Good morning, Holy Cross. Good morning. Rise and shine. The football season's over. <laughs> Today we gather and celebrate again as God's people. And we thank God for his messengers, the prophets, the apostles, our pastors, and most of all, our fellow Christians, our brothers and sisters in Christ who have that gift and that responsibility to share the message of Jesus to one and all. God made this word of grace known in the world of in the, our vocations. Samuel was called and sent with a specific warning to Eli the priest. And traditions say that the apostle Philip preached in Greece, Syria, and Phigia. And Nathaniel, also known as Bartholomew, is said to have brought Christianity to Armenia. Today we are challenged to listen to the voice of our Lord. And in that challenge, we are to consider his direction for our life as his disciples and witnesses. And so may we have our ears open today, and may we listen as God speaks to us. So I welcome you in the name of Jesus, and may God bless the service, and we stand as we sing our God, our help, and ages past. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You me and everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Merciful God, we confess that we have poured your gracious call for life and salvation, and have not been aware of our need for you. We come to you now, therefore, pay you your forgiveness, your strength, and your help as we say, speak for your servant years. We need to guide us in the ways of your commands, and restore to us life for the sake of Jesus and our Lord. God did not send his world, son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. And as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace which has come from above in the incarnation of Jesus Christ our Savior, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church, the bride of Christ, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And for this holy house, and for all who rejoice here, anticipating the eternal marriage feast of the Lamb and the heavenly kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And we pray, Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, 
Mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 You may be seated for the readings. Good morning. Good morning. The Old Testament reading comes from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 20. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. <coughs> then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lay down and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak. Lord, for your, ser your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in this place. The Lord came and stood there calling as at, as at the other times. Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, see, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons blasphemed, blasphemed God and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Samuel lay down until morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision. But Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, here I am. What was it he said to you? Eli asked, do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from me anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, he is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 12 through 20. I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything you say. For the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead and he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with the prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he, he who unites himself with the prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh, but whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. All the other sins a person commits are outside the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know 
that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God. You are not your own. You were brought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. And finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. And Peter found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. And when he saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. And Jesus answered I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. And then Nathaniel declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated as we sing. I'll do my best to invite the children to come forward. because it's noisy around us, or not to hear something that's going on around us. And today we want to talk about God speaking to us and how we need to hear. We just heard a little bit ago the story about Samuel. Were you listening? Samuel was proud to live at the temple for good. We think, oh, that sounds terrible. But it was a plot. His mother made a promise to God and if she gave into his life. And so when he was old enough, she took him and he, Samuel became Eli's helper. And one night, Samuel was sleeping, and what happened? Yeah, there was a guy called him, Samuel! And Samuel didn't feel it was the Lord, because he didn't know the Lord yet. He thought it was who? He, he thought it was Eli, yeah. And all of a sudden, he went, and Eli says, go back to sleep. He goes back, and it happened again, and it happened a third time. And then Eli says, I think I know what it is. It's the Lord calling you, Samuel. So the next time he calls you, I want, to say, I want you to say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Can you say that? Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And those are powerful words. Those are important words, and those are words that we need to say daily to our Lord. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And God did call Samuel again. And Samuel said those words. What were those words? Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And God used Samuel from that day forward. And the same is in our lives. If we want God to speak to us, 
We first have to listen to him. What are some ways we can listen to God? Any ideas? Well, cleaning your room when my mom says it. Now that's, I don't know if that's listening to God, but that's a good thing to do. What are you doing right now? Where are you? You're in church. Well, another good place to hear God is in Sunday school. It's in devotion time, maybe with your family, that you sit down and you read the Bible a little bit. In prayer, through songs, we, God speaks to us. And we're going to see some other ways today. These are all ways that we can hear what God is teaching us because the Bible is uh, our basic manual to follow. And it tells us how to do different things. And uh, so we need to pay attention. We're not very good at listening, though, are we? That's one of the biggest things, or not, I don't know what to, how would you call it, teachers complain about the day. The children never shut up. They're always talking no matter who's speaking. They think they know more than us. And there's no quiet around. Sound familiar? We need to listen to our teachers. We need to listen to our parents so we can clean our room up and not get in trouble. We need to listen to God. And sometimes the best way of doing it is just be quiet and not have any noise around. And that's one of the things I think we don't do enough of today is to be in God's presence and God's peace. Like we need to put on our headphones and listen to God and turn on all the other things out. So let's pray after me. Lord, we want to hear you. We want to hear you speaking to our hearts and to our minds. And help us to listen and pay attention to you. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being here. You may take your seat. And we sing the hymn, Great is thy faithfulness.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, dear Christian friends. Today, where it's all about communication, that's what we say. And we have the means to communicate with each other and around the net world in a matter of seconds or less. We can do group chats, and in fact, we had one started last night with my sister and brother-in-law in Kansas City, only it didn't end up the way we wanted it to end up. As my children were saying, let's do some trash talking, only we didn't have any, any right to do any trash talking at all. But anyway, today is a very special time in our world, but do we lose it to our day? Stories told about when the telegraph was the fastest method of long distance communication. A young man walked, wanted to apply for a job as a Morse cold operator. That's pretty funny. Today we would say, you know, dots and dashes. So he answered an ad in the newspaper and he went into this office address and that was listed. And when he arrived, he entered a very large, busy office filled with noise and clatter, including the sound of a telegraph in the background. There was a sign on the receptionist's calendar <clears throat> instructing all job, job applicants to fill out the, the, the form and wait until they were summoned to come into the inner office. The young man filled out his form and sat down with the seven other applicants who were in the waiting place. And after a few minutes, this young man stood up and he went right over, opened the door, and walked into the main office. Naturally, the other applicants were concerned and amused and troubled. They said, well, why is he doing that? Nobody opened the door. Nobody invited him in. Why is he coming in? And then they assumed, ha, 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 he just took care of his chance of ever being hired by this guy, being that bold. Within a few minutes, though, the employer escorted this young man out and he told the other applicants, you can all go home now. The job has been filled. This man is the, is the one who got the job. And they're now complaining. What do you mean? You never even interviewed us. You never even brought us into the office. How can he get the job? And um, he says, wait a minute. He says, I'll tell you why. The whole time you've been sitting in this office, the telegraph message has been, if you understand this message, then come right in and the job is yours. <laughs> none of you heard it, or none of you understood it, but this young man did, and it's his job. We live in a world that is full of busyness and clatter, just like that office. We are distracted and unable to hear most times the still, small voice of God as he speaks. Is that true for you? Are you tuned in to God's voice? Do you hear him when he speaks to you? The activity of being, of human beings really, one activity that we are not very good at is listening. It's surprising. It shouldn't be that hard. All you have to do is sit there, nod your head every so often. But many people can't do that. They'd rather be talking, like in the classroom or in the library. They'd rather be doing other things. Got to be busy. They'd rather be dreaming about things or watching things, not even knowing what they're watching. But listening, listening is a very difficult thing to do. Today we find out how important listening is when it comes to our relationship with God. We're in the season of Epiphany, and in this season of the church here, Jesus reveals his glory, and he lets people see his grace and mercy and love and forgiveness. And today we learn just how important it is and what a blessing it is when we listen to Christ, when we listen to his word. And may God bless us in these next few moments as we listen to God speak to us.
in many different ways. Today in the Old Testament, we met the prophet Samuel. He is one of those miracle babies in the Old Testament. A barren woman named Hannah prayed for a son. She vowed that if God enabled her to conceive and give birth, she would turn him over to serve the Lord all his life. And after Samuel was born, Hannah kept her vow to the Lord and offered her young son back to the very giver of life. She placed him in full-time service to the Lord at the temple that had been constructed at Shiloh under the supervision of a man named Eli. We are told in verse 1, and I, oh, I want to reemphasize this. It said, in those days the word of the Lord was rare. There were no visions. In other words, God was choosing not to speak to his people. And why would God keep himself from his people? Well, as we study the history of the nation of Israel at that time, we learned that these people were very, very wicked. No one was interested in listening to God. No one wanted to hear his word. They were too busy with their own lives, too busy breaking God's commandments, too busy with their own agendas. And the last thing they had time for was listening to a prophet speak the word of God to them. And so the word of the Lord was very rare at that time. But all that is about to change now. God would use Samuel to open the ears of his people. Listen to the Lord would become Samuel's call throughout his ministry. That would be his message. And he himself would be a living example of how that was done. Because Samuel listened for the Lord and listened to the Lord with ears of a servant and with the actions of a servant. Ears and actions. Is the word of the Lord rare in your life? How often do you listen to the word of God? How often are you able to come to public worship? Because together we hear better than sitting by ourselves. How often is God speaking in your own private life? Do you have time for devotions? Do you have time for prayer? Or are you too busy to have a private devotional life with God at all? You have too many things that you have to get done. These are hard questions that must be asked. And if you think about it, our society today and the situation we find ourselves is very much the same that was surrounding the time of Samuel. We have our own agendas. We don't want to listen. But the interesting thing to me is when I talk to people who are drifting away from God, they say, but pastor, I'm always praying. Hear that one before? But praying to God is not the same as listening to God. In some ways, it's the opposite. Prayer is a good thing, and I don't think we do enough of it. I know I don't. But prayer is not how God speaks to us. Prayer is not how God reveals his glory to us. And isn't it interesting in this story that Eli and Samuel, both of them were very busy working in the temple, doing religious types of things. And yet, verse 7, crucial verse, and it says this, Samuel did not know, yet know the Lord, for the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Samuel knew who the Lord was, but he didn't know him in his heart. He was serving him in his temple, but he had no personal relationship with Jesus, with his Lord. And today we have so many people who know all the answers or try to find out all the answers, but refuse to let Jesus hear where he needs to be in the temple that he has created. And so it is with so many people, so many of us, God is still a stranger. We're too busy to listen, and we pray at times when we remember, but really we're failing to make the word a priority in our lives. And God becomes more and more of a stranger. And for some, the harder we try, the further we get from him, because we make excuses. We want to know. We want to rationalize. It talk takes faith, doesn't it? Faith and belief. No more excuses. Because all the excuses do are hide our sins and are excuses for sins and we know it. But what happens when we stop and listen to our God? 
Three times God called out to Samuel, and Samuel did not know it was the Lord. And finally, Eli figured out what was going on. And God was finally speaking. And it was Samuel that was the one God was chosen to speak to. And then we come to verse 10. The Lord came and stood there calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And then Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. From that moment on, God spoke to Samuel on a regular basis. And Samuel listened. He came to know God for who he really was and he was and what he was really all about. He became a prophet that everyone respected in Israel because everyone knew that God was speaking to Samuel and Samuel was listening to God. Sometimes when we read this section of scripture, it's easy to see the point that God is making. When we read a section of scripture, it's easy to see the point that God is making. So I ask you this morning, do you see it here? God reserved a special spot in his precious word to record this simple story of Samuel and Eli. And he gives us what at first might seem like unnecessary details, but through his short story, he teaches us a very powerful lesson. And this powerful lesson is those who listen to the Lord must listen like Samuel with ears of a servant. Ears of a servant. So let me ask you, what kind of ears do you have when it comes to listening to your Lord? When God calls, are you ready to jump at a moment's notice? Do you say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening? Or have you begun to say, listen, Lord, your servant is talking? We always want to put God in. We want to be greater than God and take charge. So in order to give us the ears of a servant, God first accepts his love to us. He breaks the bond of sin that binds us. And that happens through the blood of Jesus on that cross where he redeemed us. Where he bought us back because we were in slavery to Satan and now we don't belong to Satan anymore. We belong to Jesus. And now because of God's great love, we have every reason to be attentive to what he has to say. And in response to the love, we now say, speak, Lord. For your servant is listening. Let's say that together. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Isn't it amazing that we can get to know the true God not by doing something difficult and complicated? We always want to do the hard. When it's the simple. It's simply by listening. And what a blessing it is when we take time out of our busy lives and listen to our God. For example, did you hear the voice of God this morning? Right after the first hymn. You stood up and you confessed your sins to God. You told him that you had disobeyed him in thoughts and words and deeds. You confessed to him that you weren't listening to him as you ought. And did you hear what God said back to you after you confessed your sins? God told you that his son, Jesus Christ, had taken those sins away already. He told you that all your mistakes that separated you from him are gone. God told you that because of Jesus, he completely forgives us. Were you listening when God spoke to you and said those things at the beginning of the service? And later in the service, God will be speaking to us again. This time he's going to speak to us through the gift of the Lord's Supper. And what's Christ going to say there? He says, this is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. Your sins are forgiven because this is a spiritual meal. It's a forgiveness meal and it's for you. Do you realize that when you hear these things at the Lord's Supper, you are hearing the very voice of Jesus Christ? Will you be listening today? Because Christ is telling you that everything is good and right between you and him. And that there's nothing that you have done that stands between the two of you and nothing's going to stop him from ever loving you. Isn't it amazing that we can know these things not by doing something complicated but by simply listening to the word. And what a blessing it is if we and when we listen. Did you see what happened in our gospel lesson with Nathaniel? Nathaniel was told about Jesus by his brother and Nathaniel's response was, how can anything good come from that place called Nazareth? But his brother 
challenged him. He said, come and listen to him. And when he went and met Jesus and listened to him, and Jesus revealed to Nathaniel his power, telling Nathaniel what he, Jesus, had already seen him do under the fig tree. Nathaniel was a person to whom there was nothing false. And the more Nathaniel listened to Christ, the more amazed he became. And what was Nathaniel's response? He says, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And these wonderful words of faith are words that we would like to feel and speak every day of our, to our Lord. What an amazing God we have. That he would give us this kind of faith simply through his word. What amazing God we have that he asks us to do nothing more than listen. So to say, as Samuel says, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Jesus told Nathaniel, you shall see greater things than these. And Nathaniel did. He eventually saw Jesus rise from the dead and ascend into heaven. And as we listen to the Lord, to our Lord and spend time in his word, we are able to see those same wonderful things. But too often we sell God short. When we think that he has he that he has only asked us to do ordinary things for him. But he has given us the great mission of sharing the gospel. Each one of us has been called into action. And to each one of us, some special gift has been given by the Holy Spirit that we are to use in service for others. Has the Lord been calling you to get into action as his servant? You know if he has. Listen to the Lord with the actions of the servant, with a servant heart. When the Lord called Samuel, he listened with ears and actions of a servant. And since we are dependent on God for ears of a servant, we also are dependent on him to work the actions of a servant and servant in us as well. And like Samuel, God uses our life to train us for service. As he gave Samuel the abilities he needed for service, God gives us the abilities that we need to serve him, to work together as his army, and to do things we never thought possible. As he put the heart of servant in Samuel, May you put the heart of, of a servant in each one of us. And may God make us like Samuel. May he give us ears of a servant that listen closely and carefully. May he also give us the actions of a servant so that every day we can say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And then with ears of a servant, we will respond with the actions of a servant. It has been said that man's work is his witness in life. Think about that. A man's work is his witness in life. There is always work for us to do because there's always a harvest that is waiting for the opportunity to be reaped. And we all know that the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few. We have been called during this epiphany season and every day since our baptism to be people who share the message. And we do it in so many ways. Through our words, through our actions, through the way we care for one another. Don't forget that. Listen. Listen to the Lord. And respond, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Say that with me. Speak, speak Lord, Lord, for your, for your servant, servant is listening. listening. In Jesus' name, amen. I just have to say that we are blessed here at Holy Cross. In so many ways, and sometimes we forget that. A little, I, a little story that happened this week to share that God is working here is that Thursday afternoon at 2.15, we decided we were taking down the ceiling in the guild room. All the way down and putting a different roof on, its layer roof on, because the roof needs to be replaced anyway, and put industrial vents in and make it open up so it would just like the ceiling here and it's beautiful the ceiling is absolutely gorgeous no damage at 2 30 i text brandy and audrey we're taking the ceiling down it's cost effective and they said when do you want to start and i think randy's re text back now <laughs> 
go down and talk to Gigi, talk to, call the students. It was kind of a nasty day that day. And lo and behold, by 3.15, we had 10 people here, five youth, and that seating was down by 4.30. That's not me. That was all because of the Lord. He had a plan. And he provided, if we would have scheduled it, a week, we're going to all on such and such time to do it, it would have never happened. Those are the kind of things we got to share. And the fun that we had doing it. And uh, I'll show you a picture of the crew in a little while. Let's stand as we confess our faith in the words of the nice and Creed. We speak the words together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all the worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not me, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Father. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no man. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I am the Son of and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We're going to do the prayers of the church at this time. And so we pray for the for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their needs. O Lord, put a new song in our mouths. Lead us out of all deceit and into the confidence of your truth. Let, our, let us proclaim your wonder, wondrous deeds of faithfulness and salvation in Christ without fear or hesitancy. Lord, in your mercy. King of Israel, as you once called Samuel, Philip, and Nathaniel into your service, be pleased now to call men into your holy ministry. Give them a delight in your holy scriptures that their witness may lead many to follow Jesus. We continue to seek your help and guidance here as we listen to your lead and to as we search for a new pastor. And Lord, you already have one picked out. Just let us listen to your calling. But in the meantime, Lord, you have assembled an army here that has Jesus in their hearts. They know the story well. And that proclamation is to come from each and every one of us. And may we be bold in our proclamation and may your kingdom grow. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O Lord, you called fathers and mothers and children to serve in their households. Let them serve eagerly, each according to their station, trusting that such love honors you. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, behold in mercy all whom we pray. This morning we lift up Bob Ross, Joyce Ross's husband, as he deals with cancer. We lift up Kathy, our kindergarten teacher, who is dealing with health issues and for her family's safety in Ecuador during all this turmoil there. We continue to pray for Taylor recovering from heart issues, for Agnes Simon dealing with kidney issues and upcoming knee surgery, and she's in Villa Maria. We continue to pray for Dean Tom Thompson as he goes through cancer treatment, for Dennis Plant, also with cancer treatment. We continue to pray for Shannon Penman, dealing with cancer. Here with Dan Davidson, David Vinyl, Tim Sprinkle, Winston Benjamin, Maggie Hoffman, Clifford Ricks, Pat Ricks, and all those we name in your heart. But also today, we pray for those who have lost loved ones this past week. We lift up Merlin Brown at the loss of her brother Richard, Audrey Cox at the loss of her uncle Sammy, Kun Wei Lee, for my brother Bob and his wife, Carolyn, and family as they mourn the loss of their daughter, Sherry. For Randy Smith and family at the loss of his mother, Lydia. Lord, in your mercy. Bring healing and comfort and strength and patience and certainty to all in need 
Receive our thanks for your constant watch and merciful kindness in every sorrow and every joy. Do not let our eyes be drawn from the greater marvel of your kindness in Christ Jesus, by whose grace and forgiveness alone we receive everlasting blessings. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And gracious God, we live in times of deep division, mistrust, and violence. Thus, in a special way, our celebration of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Open our hearts and minds to your truth and renew our commitment to justice and peace. Pursued through the cooperation and love. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we might realize and accept that we are all members of the same human family, created in your image and likeness. And may we be inspired to see in one another sisters and brothers with a common origin and destiny, guided by the conviction that together we can nobly fulfill the promise that you give us. Lord, in your mercy. Care and Lord God, renew the gift of your Holy Spirit to all who commune this day. Work in us true contrition to lament and abandon our sins, and so to come to com in common faith to eat your son's body and his blood, given to shed for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. These and all things that we have in our hearts, we give to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated as we bring our offerings to the Lord at this time. So the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is our duty and delight to give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Heavenly Father, everlasting God, at all times and places through Jesus Christ our Lord, who walk in this world's darkness, showing the fullness of your glory and bringing light into the dark, dead hearts of men. And therefore, with saints on earth and all the heavenly hosts, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
May this body and blood strengthen, preserve your true faith, and the life everlasting and part of peace. Amen. And we pray. Blessed are you, Heavenly Father, for you have once again fed and nourished us at your table through the blood and body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Strengthen us and support us through your pilgrim people so that we continue to proclaim your love to all the world. Keep us steadfast in the time of suffering and bring us at last to your eternal kingdom where you live and reign with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive now the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated for a moment. I want to show you a picture. I had another one too. That is my friend's house, Larry, in Iowa this morning. 45 below zero was the wind chill. 120 degrees difference. And we are. You who wants to go there? Rian? Okay. See you, Rian. <laughs> I hope you're happy where God has blessed you to put you today and we're praying for everybody in Iowa and everything through the Midwest and uh, there was a whiteout for two days and they finally this morning they woke up and the, the, the blizzard had stopped but this is what they were re uh, received. Okay, next. Pickleball. This is, this is a craziness. The steens are absolutely in Amazing. <laughs> yesterday, we opened the gym at 9 o'clock in the morning. I had a funeral yesterday afternoon, and at 1.30 to go down, they're still playing pickleball. <laughs> and finally, they said, do you want to lock up? I said, yes. <laughs> and Daryl and Cindy were there at before 9, and we're still there until we locked the door. And I said to Daryl, I said, aren't you tired? He said, I'm not letting these young ones get the best of me. <laughs> and they didn't. Thank you. And uh, we're, it's open on Wednesday nights from 6 to 8 and Saturday mornings from 9 to whatever. And to this afternoon after church, it's open again. And then, and that's next slide, we'll, I think we'll do that. This is the crew that showed up except for Madeline. Somehow she wasn't there when the picture was taken. And I think showing all of us. It's amazing how God is working and everything's falling into line. We, yes, we are take, open to take donations now for the renovation of the guild room. Uh, we don't have all the final details in, but uh, we got some things to do. And uh, it's, God's just doing amazing things. That's all I can say. And connecting us with people that we haven't seen or heard from for many, many years who want to be a part of it. So that's another way of growing his kingdom and knowing that there's a love for Holy Cross. Next, there's a youth meeting in Pickleball after church today. And so, I don't know, this court is still set up. Next, the youth have a car wash. I think that's the next one, isn't it? Car wash. The one, they had to cancel the one the other day. So now, Saturday the 20th, which is a week, two weeks, from yesterday. No, this, this coming this Saturday. Coming Saturday. That's right. Is this, this Saturday? This coming Saturday. Okay. Wash and dry. So my truck is filthy. <laughs> You're going to do it for $10? No. That's worth a lot more than that. Because you haven't seen my truck. <laughs> I've been hauling the debris away from the guild room. <laughs> so, we, so, again, the youth have been, are awesome, have been awesome. You now we have they're on fire, and I hope us adults can learn from them yep. and continue to grow with them because they're grow, outgrowing us real fast. The, the spirit that they have right now is great, and I think that's the last one, right? Okay, so be thankful you live in Miami and not in Iowa. Be put on your servant heart and listen to what God is saying, and that is stop trying to put it out and rationalize everything. Just let God speak. He's got great things planned for us. And listen to what he says. Listen to what he says. God's got great things planned, but it takes all of us doing it together. And if you can't do that, that was the hardest thing was the destruction. I couldn't do anything, and I had to just sit there and watch. And I was going crazy. Because I like to demolish. 
But anyway, I learned that other people do a great job, but I don't have to do it always. So we are blessed and continue to share and encourage one another. Let's stand to sing our closing hymn. Of course.